Hello again viewers and greetings fellow space travelers, this is Thorn of Night and welcome to episode 22 of my bee breeding guide. In this episode we are going to pay a visit to the infernal line and deal with a branch off of it called the volcanic branch. This is probably one of the more annoying branches that you will ever work with, but there's some pretty fireworks, sort of. Um, there are four bees in this. One is the embittered bee, which you have to get from the nether itself. Um, and the next one is the furious, then there's the glowering, and then finally the volcanic bee. Now, the bees in this line prefer the arid and uh, hellish temperature of the nether, but they can they can bump down all the way to warm temperature, but they still need it arid. So they can they can work in the desert, but they prefer the nether, especially because well they need nether wart as their flower. I mean you can grow it in the overworld, but it might be easier for you to just uh, breed these guys away from everything else you're doing. The reason for this is the embittered and glowering bees have a nice effect called aggressiveness. And the uh, basically the gist of it is if you are alive, then you're taking damage. Anywhere in their area, while they're active, they cause just damage to happen everywhere. It's annoying. You can uh, defray the damage by wearing an apiary suit. But you need the whole suit. Uh, just take off the hat and you are going to die if you just stand there. But next, the furious and volcanic bees have an even more, sometimes I guess, more frustrating uh, effect. It's called the meteor effect. And what this does is it summons little meteors from the sky that fall down and rain fire on everything you love. Uh... And it's uh, the meteors are silent, at least they are as of right now. So you just kind of have to watch around for fire to spring up out of the middle of nowhere. So basically, don't do this near trees you care about. Uh, definitely not a good bee for, for crossbreeding trees. Uh, but anyway, uh, these bees are added by the extra bees, and uh, they have some pretty interesting outputs that you need to know about. One, their typical output is going to be this simmering comb, and the simmering comb will give you the refractory wax, which is used for making these capsules, which can hold fluids, and then this phosphor, which can be used for making lava itself. So... Who needs an infinite lava supply when you've got bees that cause pain and agony? Anyway, next, the glowering bee will give you this glowing comb, and that's because it comes by way of the energetic line. And the uh, glowing comb will give you some beeswax and honey drops as well as redstone. So it's a nice supply of redstone by breeding these guys. And then finally, we have the Volcanic Bee, which gives you the Blazing Comb. It does produce beeswax, no honey drop this time, but instead, you get Blaze Powder, which is awesome, in my opinion. And uh, it's, in my opinion, it's also worth dealing with the, the, the Volcanic line just to get a nice steady supply of Blaze Powder. It definitely beats having to attack blazes all the time. But anyway, let's go take a look at the bees themselves. Hopefully I won't crash. Yay, I didn't crash. Now, I am in a nether, a hell biome generated in mist craft. So, just like the nether, do not sleep in a bed. As a matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and show you what happens when you try to sleep in a bed. Let's get a bed. Bed? Place it here, and boom! Lots of problems. So don't use a bed in the nether, guys. In case you did not know that, it's bad for your health. But anyway, we were in the volcanic branch. Uh, also, if you wish to 
experiment and explore with what I've done in here. This map will be available for download for you to uh, tinker with and do your practicing with the bees uh, without having to ruin your world or find out about beds exploding in the nether. <laughs> um, the uh, place where I have the file for download will have two versions of the map. One is just the base version. It has all this in it, but uh, the second one will have all of the details that I'm adding to the hub and any little tinkering updates that I want to do to these branches afterwards so you can have a before and after. Now, this uh, mod pack that I'm using is called the Unleashed Mod Pack and it is part of Feed the Beast. So you will need to get that in order to use this if you haven't gotten it already, which if you haven't, you should. It is awesome. But anyway, the first bee we're going to cover here is called the Furious Bee. Uh, it does require those embittered bees. Like I said, you get them from the nether. They're kind of hard to spot, so keep an eye out for them. And then the Sinister Bee, which comes from the Infernal Line. Uh, if you don't know how to make that, you can either hop through here and go find out, or you can just watch my Infernal video. But anyway, we have the Furious Bee here, and I got a princess out of it, so I'll just go ahead and use the princess to see how long it took me to breed this. 21 tries. I don't know why it took so long. Um, it, it shouldn't have taken nearly that many tries, but it did, so there we go. 21 generations in, I finally got a Furious Bee. But let's go ahead and compare that. It's almost, almost... A purebred bee. Very close. And I will leave these here for you to look at if you wish, and you can do some experimenting on your own here. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Where'd that come from? Anyway, uh, the typical output for a furious bee is going to include two drones and possibly some of that simmering comb, up to about two because of the production level. Now, a stack of that simmering comb will get you a stack of the wax and a, about a stack and a half of the phosphor. So that's kind of nice. Moving on to the volcanic bee, you will need some more of those embittered as well as a furious bee, which you just got from over there. And I have some uh, stock for you to play with if you wish. Uh, and we have a volcanic drone, but I will need to check the number of generations on that princess. So let's see here. Da -da. Six generations. That also was not instant gratification, but that's all right. Now the volcanic here, I took some traits from the other bee, apparently, the aggressive. But other than that, it's almost a purebred once again. That's kind of neat. I've been getting a lot more of those than I expected in this series. So I will put these here for you to look at if you wish. And let's check out the output. Typically you are going to get several comb out of a life cycle of a queen, but you'll also get two drones when you do this. But it looks like you're going to be getting on average at least two comb. And this is the one that offers the blazing comb. So let's Take a look at what a stack of that'll get you. Stack of blaze powder, about three quarters of a stack of beeswax. All right, next we have, uh, and finally, we have the glowering bee, which requires furious bees, which you've got from over there, as well as excited bees from the energetic line. Once again, you can go check that out there, or you can watch my energetic video if you wish. But let's check this out. We've got a glowering princess. That's nice. And I have some excited bees from the energetic line. All right. Now let's see how long this took to breed. Only two generations. That's not bad at all. All right. A few minor differences, but pretty close to a purebred. One of the differences is the uh, chance for the nocturnal, it looks like. But I will put those in here and then show you the typical output. You're going to expect two drones out of this, but not that much comb. There's one glowing comb out of five here. So it's, it's not going to be all that high on the output, about 20% thereabouts. But a stack of that will get you 
a stack of redstone, about a half a stack of these honey drops, and eh, about three quarters of a stack of beeswax. Now, the bees in this line do not get used for producing any new species. You can try to breed some of the traits from these bees to other lines if you wish. But the uh, bees here are not used for anything else, with the exception of the embittered, because it is in fact a hive bee. But uh, that is pretty much all you're really going to need to know, as far as I understand, of the things in this line, this branch of bees. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful and informative. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please do leave those in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to respond to you if I uh, can. And also, if you like this video, please give it a like. I do appreciate it. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe so you know when my next content comes out. But this is where I'm going to have to wrap up, so thank you once again for watching. This is Thorn of Night, and I will talk to you later.